everyone! So today I'm bringing you another author spotlight. This is one of the most requested ones that I get, and it is for the lovely and creepy Shirley Jackson. So I have a collection of her full-length novels, her short stories, and her non-fiction. I have read all of her novels, so I thought it was about time that I did an author spotlight on her. And yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna dive into it like I always do, because these always take a while to get through. Um, so the first one is the first book that I actually read by Shirley Jackson and it is We Have Always Lived in the Castle. I definitely recommend this for one of your first Jacksons, if not your first. It's short. It's one of the shorter ones. It's really accessible. Um, it kind of is a good introduction to Jackson's style of writing and it is still probably my favorite Jackson novel to date. This deals with the Blackwood family. So Maricat and her sister Constance and their uncle Julian are living in the Blackwood um, family estate and it deals a bit with like small town suburbia and kind of like their small town kind of creepiness and it's I don't want to give too much away um, without spoiling it but it is very creepy and kind of you don't really know what's going on it's got unreliable narrators it's absolutely fantastic highly highly recommend this as your place to start with Shirley Jackson next up is my second favorite Jackson and it is The Road Through the Wall this deals with a small suburban community and kind of how awful humans can be to each other and like the kind of like creepiness that goes on in suburbia. Um, this is another, I would say this is an okay place to start. It's not as engaging, like you, you don't have a main character, you don't have a main focus like you do in We've Always Lived in the Castle. So I would say maybe for your second Jackson novel, this one's really really good though. Um, absolutely love this. It's just Oh, it's really subtle. It's a little bit subtler than We Have Always Lived in the Castle, if that's even possible, but just really, really great. Next up is one of two of Jackson's novels that deal directly with mental illness, and that is The Bird's Nest. This deals with a girl with multiple personality disorder, and I really enjoyed this. I think this is in my top... Like, it's, it's definitely up there. Um, I, I prefer this, yeah, I, I would say that this is my third favorite Jackson novel. Um, I really, really enjoy this. It deals kind of with the ramifications of a multiple personality disorder on the person as well as the people around them. Um, it's just absolutely fantastic. Really, really love this. Also, this cover is just absolutely stunning. Just, yeah, I really like these modern, uh, the Penguin Modern Library editions. They're just, they're just really nice. Um, and next up is the second one that deals with, actually no, there's three that deal with mental illness, um, uh, and that is Hangs a Man. Now, this is based loosely on real events that happened. Um, I did not like this one as much. Um, I think this was my second or third Jackson that I read, so I would say maybe save this one till later. It, the narrative strain is really hard to follow, um, and I think it's, it deals with anxiety and kind of depression and it's it's very interesting. I, I do want to reread this one but it just it wasn't one of my favorites. I didn't really connect with the characters or the story um, but it does deal with mental illness which is really interesting that a lot of her works kind of touch on that. Um, next up is the last Shirley Jackson novel that I read and it is The Sundial. This deals with kind of a family um, and they're like extended hangers on and they believe that the world is going to end so they start preparing for the end of the world. Um, and it's as usual awful people and just you know fantastic. Um, I would recommend this one to start with. It's not I mean it's good but it's definitely not as good as The Road Through the Wall or um, we've always lived in the castle but it is still pretty fantastic so maybe like a middling one not 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 your last one but not the first one either and then the last novel I have to talk about this one kind of like it deals with mental illness but in a very interesting way and it is The Haunting of Hill House um this kind of takes the form of a paranormal adventure in this old house that is believed to be haunted as like a group of people kind of go to see if they can like stick it out and see if the house is actually haunted. Um, but it has elements of mental illness in this and it's really fascinating. Um, I would say this is a good one to kind of read after We've Always Lived in the Castle. I really enjoyed this one. Um, 
not my favorite, but still really good. I mean, I don't think I've rated any of any of Jackson's works under four stars. So I mean, when I'm saying, you know, it's not my favorite, it's still a really good read. Um, I have it here in the Penguin Horror. This is the only novel I don't have in the Penguin Modern Classics, um, but I do really like this edition, so. Next up is her short stories, which I'm not as familiar with. Um, I have two short story collections here. I have The Tooth, which has, I think it's five. I'm gonna quickly look at the contents. Um, and it overlaps with the other one. Yeah, it has five. So it has The Tooth, The Witch, Charles, The Lottery, and The Intoxicated. If you're looking to kind of get somebody just a little gift, this is really fantastic. Um, the Lottery is probably her best known short story and it's really fantastic. Um, so I have read all the ones in this collection and it does overlap a lot with this collection, which is The Lottery and Other Stories, which is the Penguin Modern Classic. Um, so included in this is The Intoxicated, The Demon Lover, Like Mother Used to Make, Trial by Combat, The Villager, My Life with R.H. Macy, The Witch, The Renegade, After You, My Dear Alf Alfonsi, Charles, Afternoon in Linen, Flower Garden, Dorothy and My Grandmother and the Sailors, um, Colloquy, uh, Elizabeth, A Fine Old Firm, The Dummy, Seven Types of Ambiguity, Come Dance With Me in Ireland, Of Course, Pillar of Salt, Men With Their Big Shoes, The Tooth, Got a Letter From Jimmy, and The Watery. So obviously this contains a lot more. If you're wanting to get the, pretty much all of her short stories, I would recommend getting this one. Uh, this one's just kind of nice to have. I picked up this one first and didn't realize that it overlapped so much. Um, so I haven't read everything in this edition just because I haven't uh, picked it up yet but I have read some of what's included in it because I do have the mini modern classic. So next up we're getting into some of her non-fiction. She wrote for women's uh, magazines during like the, the 1950s, 1940s um, and her stuff is really subtly subversive. I've only read one of these three books that I have to mention and it's really interesting. Um, I've, I've read a few articles where it talks about like kind of the imagery she puts forth that's like subtly disarming that kind of harkens to her her fiction writing. Um, so the one that I have read is Life Among Savages which Penguin just recently put these out I think it was last year I read this when I was in Toronto and it's just these kind of orange spines and they've got these beautiful watercolor there's two of them um, also Raising Demons is the other one and I enjoyed this. It took me a while to get through. I kind of read it in bits and pieces. It wasn't one that I sat down and read all the way through. I definitely prefer her fiction writing, um, which is why I haven't gotten to the other two, but I do really, really enjoy this um, if you are a Shirley Jackson fan. These are, you know, once you're done all the novels and you're kind of like, well, where next? Definitely pick this up. Um, and the next one is Raising Demons, which I think is more of the same. So it's just kind of stories that she's written for for these women's magazines that are about her family and her family life and they're just subtly subversive um even the names life among savages and raising demons kind of they're very jackson-esque and then the last one is one that i've had for quite a while and it came out late last year and it's um let me tell you which is new stories essays and other writings i was sent this by penguin um and i have not gotten around to it but I do want to, it's just kind of, I've been going through her fiction and now I'm gonna be starting going through her, her nonfiction and her short stories. So yeah, um, this is just kind of a collection of like a mix. It was published last year. It's now out in paperback, I've seen. I do really like these covers. I think that they're really, really interesting and I'm looking forward to diving into it. So that is my author spotlight on Shirley Jackson. Let me know in the comments down below what author you would like to see next. I am trying to do one of these a month, so help me pick the one for next month. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye.